All right, today we're going to dive into a pretty amazing puzzle, how nature all fits together. And believe it or not, it all kicks off with a really big question. Now, on the surface, that sounds simple, right? But the answer, oh, it's way more complex. This isn't just about one hungry elephant. No, it's a huge clue that something much bigger is going on. So let's investigate. What could possibly push an animal like an elephant into a direct conflict with people? See, the thing is, this isn't really a story about aggression. It's a story about pure survival. And to really get what's happening, we've got to try and see the world through the elephant's eyes. And wow, the difference is just, it's night and day. On one hand, you've got their home, the forest, where food is getting scarce and the water's drying up. And on the other, a human farm that looks like a five-star buffet, just packed with sugarcane and bananas. I mean, for a hungry elephant, what choice is there? It's literally about survival. So what's behind all this? Well, it's a whole mix of things. You've got changes in weather that are messing with their food supply. And then at the same time, we're building roads and clearing land, which means their home is literally shrinking. The forest just can't keep up. Okay, so to really understand what's at stake here, we need to pull back a bit. We need to look at the fundamental rules of how nature even works. It's time to get into the real building blocks of the natural world. And the place to start, the absolute ground floor, is the habitat. You can just think of it as an address, right? It's the place where every single living thing calls home. And the definition is so simple, it's perfect. A habitat is just the spot where an organism lives. It could be huge, like a forest, or tiny, like a piece of tree bark. And for our elephants, their habitat is that forest, the one that's getting smaller and smaller. It's the stage where this whole drama is playing out. Now, every habitat is made up of two kinds of things. You've got the living parts, we call those biotic, like the fish and the grass, and then you've got the non-living or abiotic parts, like the water and the soil. In the elephant's forest, it's all of it together. The trees, the plants, the dirt, that's what makes their world. All right, so we've got the address, that's the habitat. So who lives there? Let's talk about the residents in these natural neighborhoods. You know, when you picture a forest, you don't just see one single elephant, do you? Nope, you see a whole herd. Well, that group of the same species living together, that's what we call a population. So you've got a population of elephants, a population of oak trees, a population of birds, and so on. And when you take all those different populations, the elephants, the trees, the insects, everything, and you put them all together in that one habitat, now you've got a community. This is the neighborhood. It's where everybody interacts and honestly depends on each other to survive. But that leads to a really interesting question. In a huge, busy community, does every little piece really matter? I mean, even the tiniest little bug? The answer might actually surprise you. So to figure that out, let's check out this amazing case study. Some researchers spotted something really weird going on between two ponds. And what they found, well, it uncovered this incredible hidden connection. So here's the puzzle they had to solve. They had one pond with fish in it, and it was surrounded by tons and tons of flowers. But then a pond right nearby had no fish and way fewer flowers. So what on earth is the connection between fish in a pond and flowers on the land? It's a real head scratcher. Okay, get ready for this, because it's like a perfect chain reaction. Step one, the fish show up and start eating dragonfly larvae. That means fewer adult dragonflies hatch and fly around. Now, what do dragonflies love to eat? Bees. So with fewer dragonflies hunting them, the bee population just explodes. And what do more bees mean? A whole lot more pollination for all those flowers nearby. And more pollination means more seeds and boom, more flowers. It's amazing, isn't it? This one little pond story, it basically reveals the main idea behind this entire explainer. This is the secret to how nature stays in balance. And you know, the researchers who studied this said it perfectly. This whole chain of events just shows how closely everything in nature is connected. It's not an accident, it's a system. So the big takeaway here is that a tiny change, just adding some fish, can set off this massive domino effect through the whole system. And that, that brings us full circle right back to the elephants. A little less rain, one small patch of forest getting cleared. These aren't minor issues. They're the first domino. They're what starts the chain reaction that can mess up an entire ecosystem and force an animal as big as an elephant to go looking for food somewhere else. So I'll leave you with this question to think about. What hidden connections are out there in your neighborhood? You know, between the bees in the park or the birds in your backyard? Once you start looking for it, you'll start to see that this incredible tangled web of nature, 
It's literally everywhere. 